recognize the chairwoman of the full committee, Ms. Johnson, for five minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to start with Dr. Shondas. Uh, Dr. Shondas, can you discuss how climate change will impact extreme heat events in the U.S. moving forward? Uh, because it seems to me that though we have looked at certain areas of the country, that it's getting to be more commonplace around the country. Um, some of the extreme heat has been affected parts of the country where, such as Arizona, um, Northwest recently, Texas. Can you elaborate on how heat-prone parts of America already responding to heat stress? And are these lessons that we learn uh, can be used uh, from one city to another and municipalities uh, through some way that the federal government can spread this information, especially through these communities, because I believe that we're about to embark upon a deadly summer. And I realize that some areas of the country have not been uh, as accustomed to this heat, but I, I think this heat could show up anywhere, frankly, with the global change that we're experiencing. Thank you, Congresswoman Johnson. Um, the relationship between climate change and heat is um, really getting far, uh, getting more and more resolved. And what we're seeing is that this heat dome that we experience in the Pacific Northwest not only broke records, but broke climate models. The climate models are relatively conservative in being able to look at the probabilities between what a greenhouse gas Earth, uh, greenhouse gas uh, emitted earth looks like versus one that's not. And that difference of probability has now become unequivocally clear about the role that climate change and greenhouse gases have played in the heat dome that we just experienced. And also for those other heat waves that we're likely to see coming this, this summer. Um, in terms of the core, in terms of the relationship between some parts of the country having had a lot more experience and others, I would really look to uh, Dr. Guadaro um, for the work that's been going on in Arizona and other parts uh, that are really hot. Though I will just quickly note that one of the challenges that we've noticed in doing this work nationally of um, looking at uh, high resolution temperature is is that regional coordination is very challenging right now. Individual municipalities are working largely on their own, often based on their own goodwill and um, to be able to get ahead of this. And right now, they really don't see a lot of support coming from the federal government to be able to create a regional entity that could help different municipalities in a particular bioclimatic zone of the country get ahead of this, uh, get ahead of these heat waves that are coming. And so part of what I would really um, underscore and emphasize is a need for creating na um, regional networks of municipal uh, heat planners that could learn from each other and share those lessons um, to across the country. Uh, Dr. Guadaro, did you wanna uh, contribute to that question as well? Yes, thank you, Dr. Shondas. Uh, certainly it's very hot in Arizona and um, we have been dealing with this for quite a, a long time. And the weather that we experience in Arizona is certainly going to be the normal for other regions in the country. So I think there are some really great lessons to be learned by how we approach heat. So first of all, our buildings are really built with the idea that this is a hot climate. All housing is built with central air conditioning. When we build parks, we understand that we have to provide thermal comfort for people. And that doesn't just mean trees as shade, it also means other structures as well. Uh, when we look to um, have public transit, we make sure that our public transit is shaded or that we're going to get shading in big public transit nodes. So the infrastructure is already to some extent um, a normal, uh, the way that we approach it is just very normal. So you, when you build playgrounds, you would have a covering over it to shield the children from extreme heat. So um, my, my advice would be that other, other municipalities learn from what we've done in the region to address it. That said, I think that we still have a long way to go in, in Arizona to make sure that we're keeping people safe. 
And the other uh, area that I think that the federal government could be really helpful is, as Dr. Shandos has said, helping to formulate these regional working groups that could help municipalities to not be in a competitive environment. Because if one municipality has an urban forestry program and the other one doesn't and is rapidly paving over their city, they're working at cross purposes. So we have to make sure that we're not allowing for people to shop, if you will, uh, areas within one region that have lesser regulations or lesser political will to go and address increasing urban heat. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank believe... you. Sorry. Excuse me, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I'll yield back. My time is about to expire.